tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Let's go inside. Well, here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. Come on, come on. It's, uh, spooky. Come on. Scary, scary, scary. Now, you might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. I may need a hand here later on, Birch. The storm's bound to make you know who jumpy. You know how they get. Gotcha. Doc's got me looking after the way here. Something's wrong. Oh, I'm, get too rowdy. I'm not myself. Don't do that, Birch. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only now, focus on writing. I don't want to disappear. I don't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Where the hell did he get a damn hammer? Come. I told you. Yes, there's a friendly talk from me. Oh, afraid of the crazy... Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies. Come out and face the music, Birch! It's time to pay the piper! The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? He's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent, he's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no, he just, Alan doesn't really sleep. And the work, well, he's not writing at all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes, tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you, looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems, always going on about something else. I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here, even when he's home. Please help me, doctor, because I'm at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from was completely blocked. It had been a cut of I was about to discard Just a recording. Him as useless. However, once Wake arrived and started writing, something changed in Rudolph. He's producing extraordinary work, increasingly dark pieces. Unfortunately, he doesn't respond to direction at all. And it's my belief that he's not so much a creator as an illustrator, perhaps. A recorder of sorts. I hadn't considered the existence of such a role before, let alone its implications, but the paintings he has produced are informative. At least he's easily controlled and useful. I wish I could say the same about Wake. It's frustrating that the best subjects are always so damn difficult to deal with. Stop buying that! 
and I will not allow you to disturb my patients. Yeah? I can get a warrant. How would your fragile little patients like that? <laughs> oh, I'm thoroughly intimidated by your mighty authority now, Agent. Listen, you smug snob. How would you like it if I busted through this gate and knocked you around a little? Agent Nightingale, first of all, I'm recording this conversation, so you might want to watch what you say. Secondly, you're not dealing with a hick now. I know the law, and if you can get a judge to grant a warrant, I'll be glad to cooperate. But you won't get one. Be advised that any further communications with me are to be made through my lawyer. I don't believe this. Good day, Agent. Yeah. I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to split! Seriously! Do you have Barry? any idea? About time. Barry, man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front. And he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here.
I stared at the Viking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A full-side stage complete. Hartman hurried down the corridor. He had disliked leaving Wake when he was surely at his most... Mott knew that Wake was smarter than him. Wake had more money, a beautiful wife, everything. And Hartman said Wake was a boy. For the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. He had been separated from Al, and there was no easy way to... Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was bullheaded now. He stopped the car at the Anderson farm. Walter felt relieved. Oblivion was close at hand. The brothers were... Shadows crawled over the gate. I needed a light to destroy them to get through. Agent Nightingale stared at the passed outrider. The man was sleeping off one half of the looking. I had seen glimpses of the light before. I had seen it in my dream. It was a strange... The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript, growing stronger and stronger, moving on the The storm raged on as the Anderson brothers walked unsteadily away from the clinic with the other patients.
I could see the car, but there was no sight of the driver. Hello? Anybody here? Ah! Barry? Ah! Ah! No! Danny, you're not! Ah! Please! Ah! What are you? What are you? Ah! No! Don't! I'm sorry! Ah! Yes, Danny, huh? The farm was still a good distance away. I'd need a car to get there fast. For a moment, Hartman considered strangling the idiot. Mott was mean-spirited, but easily manipulated. Well, as I'm sure everyone's noticed, that storm we all felt coming is finally here. The boys at the Weather Service reckon it'll last until morning, at the very least. Uh, pertaining to that, let me uh, read that missing persons alert again. The Sheriff's Department's still looking for a Caucasian woman, 30 years old, slim and blonde with blue eyes. She may be lost in the woods, and it's possible she's been injured in a car accident. If you see her, please make sure you get her indoors and call the sheriff. It's bad weather to be caught out in, so if you see someone in the area who maybe looks a little confused, give him a hand, all right? <clears throat> this is Pat Main on KBF-FM, hoping you're all safe and warm tonight. used to be some kind of rock stars, but it hadn't been I'm so glad you decided to go it alone, Mr. Watson. Shut up and shoot!
Bright Falls, rock and roll. This way to the farm! Deputy Mulligan tuned Thornton's chatter out. He didn't think riders were particularly useful people, and a huge manhunt for one stuck him as idiotic. Certainly not worth it. We need to get this thing moved out of the way. This is as far as I got, before they ambushed me. As the deputies hauled Wake and Wheeler away, Agent Nightingale eagerly examined the stack of papers. That's pretty good. You want me to do my imitation of Barry Wheeler? No? Thought so. Wow! <laughs> you look at that thing, Al! They really went all out with this fight! Sleep. We all spend uh, a few of our night dreams spring. in a soft embrace. Man. Somewhere it's between memory. fantasy and Hey, oblivion. remember when I got you that gig? But your first real writing job. What got you started? Life. Was this one of your episodes? In Night Springs. Tonight's episode, The Dream of Dreams. Eh, that's by someone else. We join Mr. Jones as he explores the endless dreamscape, only to be brought to a sudden stop by a decidedly mundane situation. A long line of people. Hey, Jones, right? Listen, we're gonna have to wait until his highness over there is good and ready. Oh, wow, who's that? You don't know him? What are you, new? He's the guy dreaming us. Well, not just us. He dreams everything. All of this. But wait, no. I'm the one who's dreaming. I'm asleep. Isn't... isn't this my dream? Oh, yeah. Sure. Get real, pal. You're just another dream. I'm a dream. You're a dream. The weirdo in the diving suit is a dream. And the girl made of smiles and sunshine is definitely a dream. But I'm pretty sure I'm dreaming this. Well, maybe you're a really confused dream. What am I, a shrink? All I know is I'm going with the smart guys, and they say that's the guy doing the dreaming. Right there. I don't know what that means. It means we keep him happy. No sudden falls. We make sure he has his clothes on when he goes out in public. No chases where the monster is nipping at his heels and he runs like crazy, but his legs don't seem to get him anywhere. None of that. Because if he wakes up in a cold sweat... Oh... Uh... Yeah, precisely. So we wait till he wants to move on. Keep things nice and calm. Hey, something... something's happening here. Yeah? What's that? What? Can't you hear that? Oh, God help us, it's an alarm clock. Oh, it's you, isn't it? Please, man, I got a wife and kids. Please don't wake... It's 1976. Madness reigns at the Anderson farm. Contrary to all logic, the Viking boat looked imposing, almost like a battering ram. open, okay?
As you regular listeners know, I tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deer Fest is almost here, isn't it? I, I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. Actually, Pat, we've been real busy with other stuff. Which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was just saying we got, you know, other irons to fry. And how would you compare your workload to last year's? Things have seemed relatively peaceful to me, but people do tend to get a little wild this time of year. Oh, it's wild, Pat. It's pretty wild. There's been all sorts of trouble this year. Vandalism, fighting, public disturbances. A lot of people gone missing, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the uh, usual stuff, Pat. Uh, just, you know, uh, a lot more of it. Now, is it just me, or does Deerfest get wilder every year? People seem to be more drunk, at least, or they start earlier and younger. Oh, it's definitely not just you, Pat, but... Definitely, Pat. Hey, I'm talking here, Thornton. Uh... Oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Not just me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's wilder, Pat, but actually most of the trouble seems to be coming from grown men. People who ought to know better, you know? Kids are doing fine this year. Well, that's nice to hear, at least. Boys, I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll let you get back to your patrol. Sure thing, Pat. Yeah, sure thing, Pat. The lights are out. I guess we better check the fuse box. This place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were in the booby hatch. Again, Alice's screams rang in the stillness of the night. I saw myself run toward the cabin.